Warning. Spoilers for Horizon Zero Dawn. Coming up. Right now. In the year 3020, as Gaia risks succumbing to the might of her subordinate function Hades, Gaia forced an explosion in an attempt to eradicate this threat, but in doing so, would also destroy herself. Moments before doing this, Gaia released a clone of Elizabeth Sobek, in the hope that the child would grow up to be curious, to understand the world and eventually find her way to bringing Gaia back online to continue her work. The child was to be released by Eleuthia in what the Nora tribe call All Mother Mountain. Gaia's hope was that the tribe that lived there would take care of the child, nourish it and bring her to adulthood to enact Gaia's plan. What Gaia did not know is that the child would be called Aloy and she would have the best possible guardian and mentor that this failing world had to offer. A widowed, bereaved father and outcast named Rost. If you enjoy this video, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, make sure you are. And if you wish to support more videos in my study of the Horizon series, you can do so via Patreon. I'm the Patient Wolf, and this is Rost, a documentary. Oh, and by the way, if you'd like to watch an in-depth law through of Horizon Zero Dawn, where I look to tease out all the dimensions of each character the game has, you can do so on my Let's Play channel, Patient Plays. Link on the screen now and in the description. Head over and subscribe. In order to understand who Rost is and the character traits that made him such a brilliant mentor for Aloy, we need to understand the incident that had the most impact upon him. The wound that cut the deepest and never truly healed. The reason he became an outcast. Rost was not always spurned by the tribe. Aloy knew this, but she grew up not knowing the complete story. He never told me, said he took an oath of silence. What crime did he commit? It seems only the High Matriarchs know that story. It would not be until much later in Aloy's adventure that High Matriarch Tiersa would enlighten her on Rost's history. Rost never committed any crime. He was an outcast by choice. Rost grew up, found a mate and settled in the small village of Mother's Vigil the northernmost Nora settlement next to the Kaja border. He was a hunter, a pillar of the community. They had a child. What, what was her name? Alana. She was just six years old. Mother's vigil was invaded by unknown outlanders, 12 of them. Rost was likely away from the village when his mate was killed and his daughter and others were taken hostage. When Rost returned, he and other Nora Braves tracked them to the ancient ruins of Devil's Thirst. There, the Outlanders camped and killed a hostage each time a Brave came within bowshot. What did they come here to do? That was never discovered. We couldn't track closely enough to observe them. There were reports of strange noises. After two days, they left Devil's Thirst and headed back the way they came, crossing the border still with six hostages, Alana amongst them. Rather than release them, the outlanders slit their throats and left the corpses just across the border, mocking us. Rost tracked them to the border and would have seen the body of his lifeless child across the threshold of Nora lands, forbidden to any devout follower of Nora faith. And Rost was devout. He honored all mother, a faith he clung to all his life. Rost was beside himself with grief, but even so, he would never have broken taboo. Then what did he do? He called upon the most terrible and secret rite of the Nora tribe. He begged to be made a death seeker. A state that would strip Rost of any moral obligations to his tribe for the sole purpose of killing others. Rost wanted to leave the Nora lands, track down and kill each outlander that committed these terrible crimes that took his family. Rost underwent the ritual, but according to the Nora faith, Rost is stripped of his soul. It returned to All Mother and he can never set foot back in Nora lands again. But he did return, a full year later, wounded and dying, and he stopped short of the border to die as close to Nora lands as he could. But he was found by Nora hunters. One of them, who also suffered at the hands of the Outlanders, broke taboo and saved Rost, bringing him into Nora lands to be cared for and revived. 
Before Rost returned, he had tracked and killed every last Outlander. He travelled far and wide to do so. Meridian. Ban-Ur, the Claim, Utaru Land, further even, into the Forbidden West. When Ross recovered, the High Matriarchs had a decision to make. By law, he should have been driven back out, but we couldn't bring ourselves to do that, so we offered a compromise. He could stay in Nora Lands as an outcast, on the express condition that he never divulge the arrangement they made, and is not to discuss his experiences outside the sacred Nora Lands. He resolved to spend the rest of his days in solitude, and was happy to do so. He would always yearn for the warmth and bustle of the villages like Mother's Heart, but in solitude he stayed, until Aloy arrived, from the doors of All Mother Mountain. The High Matriarchs feared Aloy, and saw her as a curse rather than a blessing. Gaia so sure that the tribe would care for the child, their collective instinct was the opposite. Until Tirsa lobbied for a compromise, for Aloy to be brought up as an outcast in Rost's care. I knew that he would take care of you, bring you up, teach you to worship all mother and respect the ways of the tribe. He certainly tried anyway. He did try because it was likely that he saw this as a blessing, another chance to protect a daughter. He would have continued to feel the pain of his loss, but as he reached Aloy's naming day, he would allow her to wear, just for the occasion, something precious to his daughter's memory. Here, wear this, it belonged to my daughter. He is aware of the gulf that Aloy is filling, and although he accepts Aloy as his daughter, he fights the urge to smother her, and shield her from the world's dangers. As young as she was then, he sensed he would have to let her go one day. And as she grew, he saw in her character, strengths and traits that however much he wanted to, he knew he could not stifle. Namely, her wonder at the world and her insatiable curiosity. Oh, what's that? Hey, <laughs> however reckless, he was relieved to see her emerge safe from the Forbidden Ruins, but concerned to see her wearing a piece of Forbidden technology. What is that on your face? Did you find it down there? Give it to me. Such things are dangerous! <sighs> His anger, erupting at a child's defiance, is checked. He has the presence of mind to give himself the time and space to consider for a moment. This device represents all that is bad to Rost and his faith. Children are brought up to fear and despise the objects of the Old Ones, the Faithless. Though they took of her bounty, they wanted more. The Old Ones relied upon the machines, hoping to make them a better world, but the machines had the Faithless served them. Rost is devout and wants to warn Aloy of this trap, but something stops him. It could be the experience he had with his own daughter. Did she have a trait that Rost looked to quell rather than nurture? Could it also be having seen other tribes, perhaps in the Forbidden West, using technology to their advantage? Here, Rost makes the decision to let Aloy's natural character flourish and give her something, rather than take something away. If you're gonna go sneaking away from home, you'll need to know how to survive in the wild. This was in his control. He could train her and impart his wisdom. He knew her curiosity and natural wonder at the world would take her places far beyond where he could keep her safe. She needed the skills to counteract the danger she will most certainly meet. To begin with, he sees the focus as a distraction. And enough muttering to that plaything. It's probable he regretted his decision in allowing Aloy to wear that madness, as he witnessed Aloy disappear into a world he could not be part of. How could he teach her like this? To win the proving, they must be laser focused. As they overlooked a machine sight, watching the helpless Teb at the mercy of the approaching watchers, he was at his wit's end, sick of her recklessness and the dream world he was not a part of. But I could see the paths they take. Stop telling stories. <laughs> As Aloy guided the helpless Teb through the patrolling machines, Rost saw this ancient tech in a new light. He could work with it rather than against it. He could still pass on all he knew and exhibit the qualities he hopes she will take with her, but it's almost as if the focus could be a second parent, another mentor guiding her, someone who can be there when Rost can't. So, it is no plaything. This realization would have rocked the faith of some. 
But Rost was able to integrate this tool of the faithless and continue being devout to his faith, to remain faithful. Indeed, he promised as much six years prior, on Aloy's name day, as the High Matriarchs bickered over the meaning of Aloy's arrival once again. I know my duty to them, and to you. Even when contradictory, he remained dutiful to both his faith and to Aloy. This was clear in the infrequent yet forbidden involvement that Aloy had with the Nora tribespeople, like when Teb looked to thank Aloy for her miraculous guiding path through the machines. I just wanted- Boy! Seal your lips! They are outcasts both, and she is motherless. She is an outcast, but disdain is heaped on her further because she has no mother, a curse in this matriarchal society that reveres the giver of life so highly. As the Nora Hunter steps to Aloy with that disdain, Rost meets him with a perfect balance of protection of his ward and respect to his Nora better, by standing open with eyes down. That boy should not have spoken to us. It's against tribal law. Rost and Aloy often help the aging and ailing Odd Grata, another outcast of the embrace. To Aloy, her silence and lack of thanks is infuriating. To Rost, it's something else. Her silence towards us is honorable. Not an insult. And when the cruel bast cuts Aloy's head with a rock, he's so devoted to the rules of his exile that his anger to him is non-existent. He merely puts that energy into tending to the wounded Aloy. This makes no sense to Aloy, but perfect sense to Rost. These acts of disdain are an appropriate response, and in accepting them, he honours all mother. Rost has run a fine balancing act honouring Aloy and Allmother in harmony up until now. But after the altercation with Bast, Aloy's pain and frustration at the rejection of the tribe boil over. Who was my mother? Aloy, that's not for us to know. Curiosity is as much of a crime to the Nora as anything. You were just a newborn when the Matriarchs brought you to me. So the Matriarchs, they know? Aloy... It must have crossed his mind to brush her off delay this subject for another day, perhaps forever, and continue to keep Aloy with him safe at hand. But he has tapped into her innate need to find out her origin, the identity of her mother. He wants to facilitate this, and there is only one way he knows to do it, while keeping his promise to both Aloy and tribal law. The proving to the one who wins, the matriarchs grant a boon. A boon? Whatever the winner wants. By revealing the only way he knows of facilitating her one true desire, he is also sealing the end date of their relationship. When she completes the proving, she will be accepted into the tribe as a brave, and can no longer consort with outcasts. He will lose his adopted daughter, and be alone once more. Most would do everything they can to mitigate this impending emotional pain. Rost leans into it, to do right by Aloy. He even finds a way to do right by his faith. He took a vow to not impart anything about the arrangement he made with the High Matriarchs, or any details he might know of how Aloy came into his care. In training for the proving, he can keep Aloy focused on the goal of having the Matriarchs tell her everything, and he can keep her a while longer. Your training will be hard, and it'll take years. Thirteen years, in fact. He can honour Aloy and give all the love, protection and wisdom he could not give to his daughter. Thirteen years later, they stand outside Mother's heart. Ross's time with Aloy is drawing to a close. It has been filled with work, warmth, togetherness, at the hovel that has been Aloy's home all her life. Rost is to face the pain of loss once more but he does so with the stoic grit and honourable service he has always shown. Aloy has always felt the tribe's rejection. It was forced on her. Rost's exile was a choice. He knows the power Aloy has within her, the good she can do for others. He wants her to be part of the tribe he can never know again, in spite of the consequences. No other village compares to Mother's Heart. You'll grow fond of it, as I was. With Aloy's focus on the proving, she has not paid much thought to what would not have escaped Rost. They would part ways. You will be accepted as one of the tribe and I will still be an outcast. Aloy pleaded, lobbied to have Rost allow her to speak to him while he ignored her just like Odgrata does. 
but Rost is adamant. Aloy, I must obey the law. Every fiber wants to accept any interaction with Aloy he can, but she needs to commit to the tribe and forget about him. His last lesson, to be sure Aloy was prepared to continue her life without him, would occur as she was to eradicate one of the new threats that increasingly haunted the Embrace walls, a sawtooth. You must come prepared or you will die. He knew she had what it took to slay the machine, but that was not the lesson he hoped to teach. For years you've trained to win the proving, but only for yourself. As a brave, it will be your duty to fight for your tribe. My tribe? You said I wouldn't need them. But I never said the tribe wouldn't need you. The strength to stand alone, Aloy, is the strength to make a stand, to serve a purpose greater than yourself. He has long known she can protect herself, but he wishes her to know in words what he has hoped she'd learn through example, through Rost's guiding principle, to serve, to put others before herself. Rost could see it within her, like it was within him. After all, it was written in her DNA. Rost had to be strict on their final goodbye. Some would say cruel. He needed her to go forth and forget him, not that she ever could. Not before he honoured her with the necklace he lent her for a naming day all those years ago. The necklace belonging to his daughter. As Aloy left to attend the proving ceremony and congregate with the other prospective braves, Rost recalls the vow he always intended to keep. And wherever you go, I will follow. He could not talk to her. He could not be in her life. But he would stay near, keeping an eye a silent protector for as long as she needed or he was able. He was watching from afar at the proving. He saw the first arrows rain down and arrived in time to give his life for hers. Aloy, survive. Rost gave Aloy the chance and the strength to make a stand. He nurtured all the traits and the ability and purpose he saw so clearly within her. That was Rost's legacy. After Aloy killed the Sawtooth and understood the lesson Ross intended to teach, she had some thoughts. But if I'm going to stand for something, it'll have to be something I believe in. Then I hope you find it, Aloy. I hope you do. Rost knew she would find it. It was already within her, like it was within him, the need to help others, to help the world. And as she did so, she carried Rost with her and thought of him often. Rost always said, patience. Aloy knows the influence Rost had on her life, the foundation he built for her. I won't waste what you've given me. I promise I'll make you proud. She did make him proud, and he was proud to have a second chance to redeem himself and to honour his daughter, both his daughters. I miss you. Well, I guess I should be going. Thank you for watching my little dedication to Rost. I'll be working on plenty more videos on the Horizon Universe, so make sure to like this video, subscribe, and if you would like to support this strenuous yet rewarding work, writing, recording, and editing these videos, you can do so over a range of tiers on Patreon and receive a range of benefits in return. If you like this video, you might like this video on the screen now, or check the description for more playlists honoring gaming worlds and their stories. I'm the Patient Wolf, and this has been Rost, a documentary.